Our next topic here, uh, still on waves, is how to find the tension on a string if the following things are given to you. We have what we call a standing wave here. What that means is that the wave is suspended between two solid anchors at the end. It's plucked at the center and then the wave sets up what we call a wave pattern in such a way that the wave that goes from left to right will be in sync with the wave that goes from right to left and so what you then have is what we call a standing wave where the wave simply goes up and down with a maximum amplitude in the middle and zero amplitude at the end. So those are called the nodes or the, uh, yeah, the, uh, the nodes and this is called the antinode if you would like to know. Uh, the length of the string is uh, said to be 0.6 meters. The frequency of the oscillations is 440 hertz and the mass of that, that piece of string is 1.6 grams. So then to use the equation, we know that the velocity is equal to the square root of the tension times the mass per unit length. And then of course we square both sides, which means that the velocity squared equals the tension divided by the mass per unit length. And then if we solve that for tension, we can see that the tension is equal to velocity squared times the mass per unit length. Now, the mass per unit length we can calculate because we have the mass and we have the length. So that's straightforward. But now for the velocity, how do we do that? Well, let's go back to our basic wave equation that says that the velocity is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. Now the frequency is given but the wavelength is not. We're given that the length of the string is 0.6 meters, but it's not, that's not the wavelength. Notice that if we take this top portion of the wave, the way it's drawn, and we continue that, like so, you can then see that this forms a complete wavelength. So we start here, we go to the very top, back to where we started, but on the way down, get to the, the farthest point down and back up to this point, this here is a complete wavelength, which means that this is only a half a wavelength. So what we could say here is that the length is equal to a half a lambda, and therefore lambda is equal to twice the length of that string. And we can plug that in here for lambda. That means that the velocity is equal to frequency times twice the length, and that can go in here for the velocity squared. So the tension is equal to the velocity squared, which is the frequency times 2 times L, quantity squared, times the mass per unit length. So mu is the mass per the length of the string, so that's M over L. Now we have to simplify that equation. So we have the tension is equal to the frequency squared times the number 2 squared times L squared times M divided by L. Of course, this L cancels out that L. So the tension is equal to the frequency squared times 4 times L and times M. And we can then plug in the numbers for all that. Notice also we may want to get the velocity here just to get a, a feel for how fast that is. So the frequency was 440 times 2 times 0.6 equals, that would be 528 meters per second. So velocity is equal to 528 meters per second. And then we plug these numbers in here, we get 440 hertz is per second, we have to square that, times 4, times the length, which is 0 0.6 meters, and times the mass, which is 1.6 grams converted kilograms, which is 0 0.0016 kilograms. All right, 440, we square that, times 4, times 0.6 and times 0.0016 equals and we get a tension of 743 newtons. Now let's see if we, could got, we can get the same result by using this form of the equation and this result right here. So we have T is equal to V squared times mu. We got the velocity here which is 528 meters per second. We have to square that and multiply it times the mass per unit length, so we have 0 0.0016 kilograms divided by the length, which was 0 0.6 meters. Let's see if we get the same result. Hopefully we do. So we get 528, we square that, times 0 0.0016 divided by 0.6 equals, and we get again, yes, 743 newtons. So that gives us a pretty good feel that we have this correct and 
Notice that, again, you start with the basic equation between velocity tension and mass per unit length, and the basic equation between velocity frequency and wavelength to find the tension on the string. And that's how you do that.